Brian Dolesky with Able Distributors. I've got videos on how to check static pressure of an existing system. Go ahead and check that. And then I've got a video on using the manual D to come up with the proper settings to use a ductulator and figure out your duct uh, design. This is more duct sizing. And I put simple up here for a reason because I'm not gonna go through the deep dive of how to actually size things because what I find is nobody does it. So I'm hoping a simple guide will at least get guys to think about it. And if you've got a problem house, go deeper, go back, look at my video on manual D, uh, get the books, do the research, it's worth it. But nobody seems to do the work. So today I figured I'd come up with just a simple duct sizing this is one direction, not the band. It just means that the furnace sits at one end of the house, the ductwork goes all the way across. I'm gonna do another video where the ductwork, the furnace sits in the middle, the ductwork goes both ways. And then I might do another video on zoning because when I was a contractor, I zoned a lot of houses, people always loved it. So before I get started, the system we're looking at here today, again, is one way, it's 1600 CFM or a four ton. And in here, I'm gonna talk about reducing. So when I talk about reducing, it's either with a made reducer, which is great, or the wedge style. And if you guys want a video of me cutting this into a duct, I'm sure we do all do it the same way. But if you've never seen it done, you've never used one of these, I can absolutely do a video on that. I like these a little bit better than these. And I'm going to tell you why. When you have floor joist 16 inches on center, an eight foot piece of duct works out perfect. You'll never have s cleat joint in the middle of a bay. You can go joist to joist, it works out great. When you go five foot duct or you use a transition that's only 12 inches, you just gotta make sure that in that bay where now you're gonna have an s cleat a little bit into every single bay, that you don't either have two takeoffs or plumbing going through there where you need to hold the takeoff all the way over to the side, it gets in the way. So I prefer these more than those just because I go eight foot duct work and it works out. Even though some of the duct design, they might want you to transition every four or five feet. Again, for me, it just doesn't work out to be simple and I'm trying to keep this simple. So everything I'm looking at here is eight foot duct. When I talk about a takeoff, this is, a typical adjustable top takeoff, six inches, but the opening is seven. It helps with the static, it helps with airflow. I'm not talking about just dovetailing an elbow in, I'm always talking about this type of uh, a takeoff. So let's get started. 1600 CFMs. So I figured roughly 15, six inch supplies. Typically you have more supplies, you have more area for supplies than you do returns. So I'm thinking 15, six inch supplies each one at 110 CFM, and I'm just going off the recommended residential setting on my ductulator. And again, it's a good place to start. 1,650 total available CFMs on those supplies. We know we're not gonna hit it, because as soon as you throw a boot and a, and a floor register and an elbow in there, the static is not gonna let you get a full 110 CFM out the other side, so that's fine. And I, on the return duct, I figured 10 seven inch returns, 160 CFM a piece. Again, typically those runs are shorter because they're on inside walls. So you can actually get closer to 160 CFM out of each one for a total of 1600. So let's get started. I started out in 30 by eight. That first piece of duct has to be capable of the full 1600 CFM. Anything less than 30 by eight, it's just not gonna do it. You know, I'm, I, I run across a lot of guys when I go to jobs and I ask them, what made you choose that size duct? And they say it fit. I, I don't like that answer. Either go 24 by 10, go 20 by 12, go 30 by eight, do something to make sure that you have enough in your first piece to handle the entire load, the entire CFM. It's where you gotta start. So I took four off that first piece, that, that's roughly 440 CFM off. So the next piece I dropped down to 24 by eight. It's a little oversized because we took 440 off of that. So we're a little oversized, but 24 by eight is good for 1250. We took five more supplies off of that. That's 550 CFM. 
We've marked down the 16 by 8, which is capable of 700 CFM. We took three more supplies off of that. We stepped down to 10 by 8, which is capable of 400 CFM. We only have three supplies coming. You never take one off the end cap. You should never be within a foot of the end cap if you can, if you can uh, avoid it. Even if you had to take it off the side and step it out, it's the right way to go rather than taking it off the end cap. So if you can see, when I reduced, this actually came up to be 22 by 8. Honestly, most supply houses stock standard sizes. And this simple routine is you're not making anything weird. You can just run to any supply house, buy all the ductwork, buy all the, the transitions, and make it super, super simple, and you don't have to have a shop at all. So that's how I did the supply, figuring 15, 6-inch supplies, all with top takeoffs, all pretty simple. The return I did a little differently because, again, returns sometimes you just can't get returns, especially at one end of the house. Typically, this might be the kitchen wall. You're not going to get any, any returns in there. So I kept the 30 by 8 for two 8-foot sections just because that first piece, we only took off one 7-inch return. It's just not enough to reduce to 28 by 8. I'd rather just go two 30 by 8s, keep the volume there, be capable of bringing back all the other returns. So then as soon as the second piece, we took three more off. Then it allowed me to reduce down to 24 by 8. I took three more returns, reduce down to 16 by 8, three more returns. So the two trunk lines don't match perfectly, and they're not really designed to match perfectly. Sometimes they might, but more often than not, you're going to find that the bulk of your returns are in from the outside walls, in from the outside walls, in the middle of the house. So usually your, your return trunk line ends up to be shorter. It doesn't mean that it can be smaller. You still have to be able to have the capability of a full 1600 CFMs. Even the drop, 24 by 10, that's maxed out. I mean, if this was a five ton system, you got to go 24 by 12 to get enough air for that drop. And then I would still put the furnace up in the box or do a wraparound return, whatever way you're going to do it. Take a little off the side, a little off the bottom to make sure, even with the 1600 CFMs and that 24 by 10 drop. Now, if it was me, when I take that drop into the ductwork, I'm going to build my own little transition. So my opening at the ductwork, it might be 24 by 15. I'm going to build a little transition to get down to 24 by 10. Drop all the way down, put a filter. If you can't do a, an elbow, just come all the way down, put it on a box, put the furnace on the box because that furnace, here's your furnace. If you just take and cut an opening inside, the t max opening you're going to get is about 14 inches. If you put it up on a six inch box, now you can get a full 20 inches, taking some off the side of the furnace, some off the bottom, take out the bottom of the furnace, it'll definitely, definitely help. So when we reduce, we do it for two reasons. A, you're not going to get the velocity. If you kept this trunk line one size all the way down, you'd have no velocity and you need velocity to move that air to treat the home. So the way I laid this out, we're keeping more than 600 feet per minute and less than 900. It's going to be seven or 800 feet per minute is what this, this layout right here does. And for a residential situation, I think that's perfectly fine. You don't want it honking. You don't want the registers to rattle or squeak or whistle. You don't need their blinds to blow all over the place, but you need enough force to change the air in the house. And that's what we try to do here. As long as we're talking about feet per minute, remember that every single time you do anything, any turn, any elbow, you're adding restriction. So straight as humanly possible. If one of these was a jumper where I had to jump below the joist, back up into the joist and then over, I would probably make that a seven inch run and I would go a four by 12 floor register instead of a four by 10. And going four by 12 on even on the six inch ones is not a bad idea because that grill is one more spot where it gives you back pressure. It, it dilutes how much air is coming through that grill. It's only rated for so much. So a four by 12 opening might help you out. Even on the returns, these returns are all seven. 
Now, a lot of times what I used to do is I would do a seven inch high low so that if that grill, the, the louvers in the grill were spaced close enough together that it might restrict some of the air, it would just get the extra air from the upper grill. So it's another way of get, making sure that you've got enough air. All this, all this work with a ductulator and your volume and your velocity, it's all about making sure that the furnace can do its job. It can do the air changes. It can move enough air to A, cool the house, B, not overheat that furnace. So if you follow this, you're gonna be there. Yes, if you have the time and the energy to dive deep into the, the manual D, get the book and actually figure things out, it's a great thing. But literally you'd have to go to the house, kind of map it out, figure out how many elbows you're gonna have on each run, what your longest run for the supply and return is gonna be, what the static, how many feet that actually adds up to be. And once you start doing that, you're gonna realize the numbers are astounding. Just from that plenum to the ductwork could be 80 feet, just for that opening. It's, it's crazy when you really start seeing how the ductwork feet adds up. So this will get you there, this simple way It'll get you really, really, really close. It'll get the system to work. If you can't get 30 by eight, go 24 by 10. Build your own transition or keep the whole trunk line by 10. Just size it that way. Whatever it takes to do, do it. But you'll find that what I did here was just standard stocking stuff. Everything, every supply house should have in stock. And that's basically it. 10 seven inch returns, 15 six inch supplies. I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, well, I might have a four inch supply for a little walk-in closet or a little powder room. Again, just figure it out. You can take a six inch supply off and maybe do two fours if you have that. The 10 seven inch returns, if you don't have enough wall space, everybody nowadays are building these houses with a grand open design. Beautiful, except for us. We don't have any walls to get to the second floor even on a ranch, an open design ranch, we don't have any place left to put returns. Putting them in a floor sucks. Putting them in an a island knee wall in a kitchen, most places won't allow you to do that. You start running out of places to put returns. So if you can't, in a scenario like this, if you can't fit 10 sevens and you can only fit eight, bump them up to eight inch. You gotta do something to get the air in. Do a central return with a bigger duct. Again, you gotta watch the velocity on the face of that grill. You gotta watch the size of the grill. I guarantee you it's gonna be bigger than what you want there, but a bigger grill will move more air and have less noise. I hope some of this helped. The next one is gonna be the furnace in the middle. I know you're already thinking, hey, I don't need to see that video because I can kind of get it. I'm still gonna do it anyways. And then on that video, I might elaborate in the zoning this situation would be tough to zone. I've zoned homes like this. New construction, I would have a second supply trunk, one for the basement and the first floor, or one for the first floor and second floor. A home that's lived in, I would do individual dampers, and we can get into that in another video. Brian Dulesky, Able Distributors, thanks.